Oh, hey everybody. Today on The Post House, Jeff's gonna show you how to get HDR up onto YouTube. It's part two, the sequel. It's like part two, Hot Shots. Remember that movie? You don't? So this will be project setup. Very important. Maybe the most important step in the entire process. So, yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Post House. Uh, today's episode will be HDR Setup Part 2. Now we're going to open up DaVinci Studio 14.1. It is on El Capitan, but it is working. Uh, I've had no problems. The first problem I had was uh, my deck link wasn't working, but if you just upgrade your drivers with desktop video through Bike Magic, uh, they will work right up for you. All right, so we're gonna just get into this project that I've already started setting up for Sully Cortez's NYC footage that we did that little piece on. So when you come in, it automatically is taking me to color. So we'll go to media. Actually, no, we'll go to edit first. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my project before I do anything else. So in edit, I go to timeline, timelines, import, AAF, EDL, XML. Because when I did this, I actually cut this reel in Premiere and then XML'd it out into DaVinci. Now it's going to tell me that two shots are not there once it wakes up and searches through all my footage. Okay, two of two clips were not found. I'm not going to search for those because that is a music track that I am not using for this project at all. So I went ahead and deleted it. And this is my project. I'm going to go ahead and move this one clip out of the way. Then we're just going to go ahead and delete these extra clips that I had on the back end of my XML. So I'm kind of conforming this a little bit here. Uh, I'm just trying to drag it and organize it and make it a little bit cleaner for me from a color span standpoint later. There we go. Three, that's 3301, 34. I'm going to give it one second of black space here. Put that piece right there. Save my project. All right. So now you can do this in color. You can do it anywhere. I usually do it from the color page because of changing the scopes. When you change the scopes, you can automatically see the uh, scopes change now. So master settings, I am in a UHD project, which is what I was cutting in in Premiere, and that is correct. My video format for monitoring is wrong, so we're gonna take that to UHD right there. Go ahead and save that and get my screens going up. All three screens are up now. I'm gonna go back in the settings here. So master settings, my project's UHD, 24 frames. My playback rate is gonna be 24 frames as well. My video monitoring is set for my UHD. Then the first move for HDR is going to be down here in video, video monitoring. Underneath monitor scaling, you have use Rec 601 matrix for 422, and then you have enable HDR metadata over HDMI. You want to click that enable HDR metadata over HDMI. And then that is all in the master settings now. So next one you need to do is go to color management and up here is color science. We're going to go color science, color managed. We're going to use separate color space and gammas. Not going to worry about this input one right now. That is going to say 709 gamma 2.4 for this tutorial. If you have footage that is vlog or that is um, in another log like Sony log, Canon log, I think Canon log is 2020. Uh, in any of the logs that are 2020, you're going to want to change your input space to your, for Panasonic, it's Panasonic V gamut. Then your gamma will be V log. Uh, you have red in here, you have Sony gamut. So you would have to change it based on your camera and the type of shooting you're doing. Input settings for this is going to be 709 gamma 2.4 because I have a little bit of vlog and a little bit of it looks like Cine D possibly. So we're just going to keep it right there. 
So timeline color space and output color space, those are the two that matter the most. Timeline color space for this project is going to be right 2020. The gamma is going to go down to ST2084, 1000 nits. 1000 nits is what we're hitting as our top point. So we're going to do that. Rec 2020 is going to be your output color space. And you're also going to go to SC2084, 1000 nits. We're not going to worry about tone mapping or gamut mapping. We're going to go down here to HDR mastering and we're going to have it set at 1000 nits. Then if you go back down, there's nothing else on this page that needs to be changed. So we will save that. So now the screen has gone way different. We're going to put the scopes up here. And my scopes are already changed. Dang it. So next we're going to do is go to DaVinci Resolve Preferences. And then you're going to be stuck in this in the system settings where you have hardware configuration, media storage, video and audio, audio plugins, control panels, advanced. Don't worry about that. You're going to go over here to user. So click on user. You have UI settings, audio save, edit, and color, color panels. Keyboard mapping, which is a cool new feature that I think is only in 14. I don't remember if it was in 12 or not, but I think it's only in 14. It's kind of nice. Uh, but you're going to want to go to the color one here. I already have it enabled, so I'm going to click it off. The very top one is the one we want. It's enable HDR scopes for 2084. You're going to want that one clicked on. The rest of these are not necessary for HDR, so we're just going to go down and save it. Show scopes. Our scopes are at HDR standards, which this is going to be a zero for your black, one, ten, one hundred nits, a thousand nits, and then ten thousand nits. Ten thousand nits is going to be for Dolby Vision. Uh, nobody watching this is going to be doing Dolby Vision yet. Uh, if you are, great. Please send me a license so that I can do Dolby Vision as well. But we're going to go through, and I'm just going to do a really quick one here to show a little bit. It's just my standard node setup that I do. So let's go to a, wait, let's go to Times Square here. So what I do is I grab my still. I go to Times Square. I want to place this still right here. It's going to be apply grade, which is just taking my node tree and copying it over. So now I'm going to go ahead and just do a real quick, quick color grade because this is not about the grading part of it. This is about setting it up. When you're monitoring this on your screen here, just on your computer, you will notice that it is still not very contrasty. It's a little contrasty, but it's still a little flat looking. If you're looking at this on HDR, it's going to be really really good and they spread out very well. So even though you can see it, it's still not showing you all of everything. So that's kind of my point with this is that you do need to have some type of grading tool with you to be able to look at it and you should have some pretty decent knowledge of parades, waveforms, and vector scopes uh, and histograms. Histograms are good. The ones that I usually work waves, parades, and vector scopes. You can still do this technically correct if you're using those and you know how to use those. We'll have to go through that in another tutorial. But that is how you set up your timeline and get HDR set and ready to grade. So I hope you liked this episode. And then if you have any questions, please email me or Drew. Drew at craftshow.com, Jeff at craftshow.com. And then uh, we'll come back to the next one and we'll do a grade. And then we will go into deliveries as well. Drew will put like, subscribe, share stuff. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share. I'm knee deep in a pitch deck. If you don't know what that means, we'll teach you one day. So 